Welcome to Let's Talk About It. Here we go! Oh, oh no! Oh my god! No, no way! Oh, Xavier Doom! Oh, look at these fights! Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to Let's Talk About It, the series where we talk about everything going on in the movie, TV, and video game world. I'm your host, and through this series, I go find topics that I think you guys will enjoy, topics that I want to discuss with you, get your opinions on, and with all that out of the way, be first, guys, please press the subscribe button to me right here. Just pressing that button helps out our channel so, so much. Because we are on the road to get 500 subs, and you know, we're almost there. We're, 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 I'd say we're about halfway there. Halfway there. 500 subs is the goal right now. So if you guys can just press that button, it'll help so much. And with all that jibber jabber out of the way, we can finally move on to our topics here today. And let's start with this one. We all know we got Fantastic Four coming uh, later in 2025. A movie that I'm somewhat excited for, you know. I'm not like super, super jazzed about it like a lot of people are. You know, I'm excited for it. It's not my most anticipated movie of the year. But, you know, I've been wondering, I've been wondering, you know. We all know also Fantastic Four will be in another universe. It's very, very presented in the images we've seen and from the little snippets we've seen from Comic Con and D23. So the other question we're wondering is could there possibly be other? heroes appearing in the film more like maybe some avengers you know maybe like captain america thor maybe a version of iron man because it feels like this universe in my opinion is more of a comic accurate universe well according to comicmovie.com the director matt chapman has some has some uh comments to like share with us about that according to them they say the fantastic four first steps director reveals whether other superheroes exist in the team's reality. Now, this is what he had to say. The great thing about this is we're building a new universe where there are no other heroes, he revealed. It's the Fantastic Four. So basically, he's saying, you know, we don't want to tell, you know, uh, this is a new universe. He, he kind of he, he kind of gets to do what he wants to do. So he doesn't want to oversaturated with cameos, what I think he's trying to say. Which, you know, I'm like, I don't know how I feel. I'm a bit mixed on having other heroes appear in the Fantastic Four movie. Like, I think the main goal, guys, of this movie is give us a good Fantastic Four movie. You know, we've had three subpar Fantastic Four movies. Even though those original, you know, Jessica Alba, uh, uh, uh Chris Evans, uh, Fantastic Four movies. I, I, I enjoyed them. You know, they, they weren't the best, but there were parts I enjoyed. Uh, and, you know, we got that fan four stick, which, you know, we don't need to talk about that. That was just a complete disaster. So there's a lot of, I think, writing on the Fantastic Four movie. Not just for people having the stink of those other three movies, thinking, you know, oh, Fantastic Four, it's kind of a joke. It's kind of a joke. Uh, I think, you know... I think they got someone really, really good in Matt Shackman. I think, you know, I think Matt Shackman is on the rise. His stock's rising, you know. You know, after WandaVision, he was going to do a Star Trek movie. He was going to do Star Trek 4. And then, then Kevin Feige was like, okay, well, why don't you actually do Fantastic Four first? He's like, oh, I'm going to do Fantastic Four. I think Matt Shackman can do something really interesting. You guys remember, Matt Shackman was the main creative force behind WandaVision, which I still believe it's the best Disney Plus thing that's ever been put on the platform, including all their Star Wars and all their other junk they put on that, that on Disney Plus. I I think I think he made he's made the best thing. You know, WandaVision was great. You know, we turned in week by week, and if he can bring that type of flavor to the Fantastic Four, I think it will work. But let's go into the issue about me talking about other heroes in reality. One point, I'm like, oh, you know, this could be kind of cool because. If you kind of look at uh, the artwork of the Fantastic Four, the concept art we've seen, some of the leaked images, it's very much that 60s vibe. That They look like a comic accurate Fantastic Four, really going through those 
original F4 costumes. So now the thing is, if they do have other heroes in here, like Captain America, maybe the X-Men are in this universe. You know, I don't think they need to show them. I think what they can do, what they can do, is mention them. You know, you know what if like Ben Graham's just reading a newspaper and it says, it says, X-Men... X Men arrive in Genosha, or blah blah blah. Like they could do little Easter eggs like that. I think including actual actors to play these other heroes, I think that would be a mistake because it kind of takes away from the Fantastic Four. Because you're watching the movie, imagine you're watching the movie, like oh god, there's Sue Storm, there's Johnny Storm thing, and then all of a sudden Iron Man shows up. It's like oh oh Iron Man, Iron Man. You're not gonna remember the movie for the Fantastic Four. You're gonna remember it's like oh you guys you guys aren't ready for the Fantastic Four. Guess what? Iron Man showed up. You know, I think it takes away from what the movie's really about. And, you know, I, of course, am excited to see it. It's not my most anticipated Marvel movie, but it's definitely up there. But what do you guys think? Are you excited for Fantastic Four? And do you think they should include other heroes in this movie since it does take place in another universe? Leave your comments down below. And, guys, let's move on to our second topic here today. Sticking on our little Marvel trend, uh, we got a little movie uh, com coming out in 2026-2027 called Avengers Doomsday, Secret Wars. Yeah, really small movie, guys, right? You know, very small, you know, very, very small movies. I'm just kidding. Big movies, big movies. Uh, and we've all been wondering, you know, who's going to lead this movie? Because really, through the Avengers movies, the leaders of the Avengers or those movies have been Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr., of course, Chris Evans is Captain America. It's not running around anymore. And then Robert Downey Jr., his Iron Man's dead, but he's coming back to play the main bad guy in this film. So it's like, who can lead the team? Who is going to be the person who's going to rally everyone together? And according to comicbook.com and my and a good person we like to talk about, my time to shine, we might have a we might have a little details on it. According to them. Avengers Secret Wars rumors may reveal plans for Tom Holland Spider-Man, Deadpool, and Wolverine. Now, we'll go into the Deadpool and Wolverine section of this article a little, a, a little later. We're going to talk about the Spider-Man stuff. So, this is according to My Time to Shine. He says, Tom Holland Spider-Man is still expected to be Avengers Doomsday lead. However, the wall, the wall crawler will have a smaller part to play in Secret Wars. And, you know, that makes sense. Now, what we can kind of take away from this is that Tom Holland is going to be the lead in this movie. Now, I think that is a really great idea. A lot of people would think, like, oh, maybe Sam Wilson, maybe Carol Danvers. But we all got to remember, Tom Holland, Spider-Man, and Tony Stark have a very special relationship. If you want us to realize how sad, you know, it's going to be for these heroes to see... Robert Downey Jr., a.k.a. Tony Stark, as a villain this time around, you got to make Tom Holland a central figure, you know? I think, you know, with everything in the MCU, you know, with all the things that haven't worked, I think Spider-Man has been the one thing that worked. The one thing that they kind of trust. And, you know, sure, you know, I don't specifically see Spider-Man ever being really a leader of an Avengers. You know, I don't think... He, uh, I don't think Tom Holland Spider-Man is there yet. I don't think he ever will be. You know, I always see, like, Spider-Man as someone who will join the Avengers as a member. You know, but, you know, if you want to build, you know, that, like, really, really, like, gravitas between Tom Holland and Ron Downey Jr. Because you got to remember, when Tom Holland's going to... When Spider-Man is going to see Tony Stark again, he's going to be like, that's... That, it's him. My father figure. They had a father, like, son relationship. We know that from Endgame, from... Far from home, uh, from homecoming, you know, how much he looked up to Tony Stark. And, you know, seeing the person, you know, that he saw as a father die, we saw it really wounded him. Look at Far From Home, how much of an impact that had on him. You know, I think it's going to be very important. This is going to be very important for Tom Holland's character as well, you know. I think, you know, it's going to be really cool to see that relationship. And now, let's go to the other part of this. They also say that Tom Holland will not have a huge role. In Secret Wars. I think, you know, Doomsday is not going to be a total multiversal film. I think what's going to happen is we're going to have the heroes we know from our Earth. You know, from our reality. Banning together to try to stop Doom from creating maybe Battle World or maybe merging all the universes into one. 
And when Infinity is going to happen, they're going to lose. Just like in Infinity War. These heroes are going to lose. Because Doom is a threat that you, that they just cannot stop. And I think there's going to be kind of what they did in the comics. You know, in the recent war run of Secret Wars, I think the 2015 version, Reed Richards de- designed a craft, you know, that could that would save certain people so they could go and try to fix things because they know they were going to lose. And, you know, this craft lands and they land in a whole new reality where Doom has merged every universe into one. You know, where there's a section where Doom rolls a certain section, you know, where the, the heroes of, like, Captain Britain and his kind of people rule the other. There's a, there's a section where Mr. Sinister rules, like, which is cool. Then there's also, like, this Thor, you know, Death Squad, you know, the kind of the soldiers that Doom controls. It's very, very cool. So I think what's going to happen is that they're going to, we're going to have some heroes survive. Some heroes are going to come and survive from our main MCU and wake up and they're going to be surrounded by multiversal characters. Characters, I believe, that will include maybe even many X-Men characters uh, like James Martin Cyclops, Halle Berry Storm, I think Andrew Garfield, Deadpool Wolverine, you know, the Spider-Mans, you know, who knows who can show up. They have so many legacy characters at Marvel that can show up in Secret Wars that it's kind of hard to think, like, how, who can show up, who's going to show up. Because I remember doing an article, like, a few months ago saying, like, they're looking to bring as, mu- as many legacy actors into Secret Wars as they can. We don't want to see Gambit again. We don't want to see Blade, Elektra, maybe even get Ben Affleck to suit up as Daredevil again. We want to see, you know, and they could also be a nice swan song to these legacy characters. But guys, you know, that that's what's kind of happening. This is what's kind of happening here. But also, they go and also say that there's also a rumor that Andrew Garfield is going to have a really big role in that. So that kind of shows us, you know, maybe Tom Holland, Spider-Man, doesn't make it to this new battle world. Maybe it's going to be about Andrew Garfield, you know, the Spider-Man who's not as, like, loved as uh, as Toby and Tom, you know, because you really think about the storylines with Spider-Man. You know, you have Tom Holland who's basically completed his arc in my my way in the Homecoming trilogy. He's going to a new arc right now with Dustin Daniel Craig directing those movies. Tom McGuire had his moment, had everything he had to do. You know, he had a beginning, middle, and end. Sure, it could have said Spider-Man 4, but Spider-Man 3 left it off where, you know, you didn't need really another Spider-Man movie. But for Andrew Garfield, we, when we hear No Way Home that he stopped pulling his punches, I'm like, whoa, wh- wh- what happened to you, Andrew? What happened? Like, how much did Gwen's death affect you? I want to see, you know, more of that. I want to see more of Andrew Garfield because he's such a world-class actor, and I think he's probably one of the... I think he's my Spider-Man. He, in my opinion, is the best Spider-Man. I love Andrew Garfield. And, you know, maybe having him a bigger role, you know, I'd love... The one thing about Secret Wars makes it fun is having the interactions between certain characters, you know. Characters, you know, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do if I see Hugh Jackman and Tony McGuire on screen today, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know. I think do, I think Secret Wars and Doomsday is a chance for Marvel to get back in the limelight, to, to, for people to be like, Marvel is back, baby. Marvel is back. But those are just my thoughts on that, guys. But what do you guys think? What do you guys think about this? I'll leave your comments down below. And guys, we're going to move on to our third topic here today. Is this. There's a few directors in the world where I will go see if when they say like, oh, this person's in a movie. I don't care what the movie is. I'm going to go see it. One of those guys is Christopher Nolan. You slap Christopher Nolan's name on any project. I'm like, I'm there. I'm there because the thing about Christopher Nolan is that I believe he makes epic films. Films that are made, that you have to be there to see on the big screen. You know, if that's to Dunkirk, if that's to his Batman trilogy, if that's to Oppenheimer, if that's even to Tenet, which is a movie I somewhat still enjoy. He's just one of those directors where you have to be there day one because you have no idea what he's about to show you. Like, he's going to do something that's going to surprise the hell out of you. Well, and we've been wondering, when are we getting the next Chris Nolan movie? Because we, Oppenheimer had so much success. And, you know, we're wondering... we got two questions. When's it coming? And who is he going to be making it with? Well, according to Deadline, we now got confirmation on both of those questions. According to them, 
Christopher Nolan sets next movie at Universal and IMAX for summer 2026 with Matt Damon eyed to star. Now, in no way this article tells us what the movie is. You know, there's nothing like I'll saying, you know, hey, he's making this movie, he's making that movie. And, you know, they don't need to put that in there. I'm going to tell you why. Because just by putting the name Chris Nolan, you're just wondering, what does this man have up his sleeve? You know, this is going to be his latest movie off his Oscar win. So you know there's going to be some buzz with it. You know, I'm already into the Christopher Nolan club. You know, I will go see any movie he makes because I love this type of style he tells with his movies. You know, you know he always has some idea, you know, some idea where, like, no one's like, that can't work, you know, it's like, oh, it can work, it can work, if anyone can make it work, it's Chris Nolan, look at Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer, you know, in no way, you know, if you, I don't think if anyone else did Oppenheimer, would have had the success it had, because, you know, you look at, you know, uh, what Chris Nolan did with that movie, I don't think a Steven Spielberg could do that. Honestly, I don't think, you know, a Martin Scorsese could do it. I think, you know, the way Chris Nolan told Oppenheimer, the way he shot it, you know, made it so cinematic. And, you know, I, I, also, I can't imagine anyone else but Chris Nolan doing that movie. And, of course, you know, we also got Matt Damon coming to the mix here. we got to remember, you know, Matt Damon, you know, he hasn't been on the hottest streak yet. You know, especially, you know, I think he just had that, what was that movie? Did you, I think he just had that movie with Casey Affleck, right? Which, ugh, I heard it wasn't that good. You know, but, you gotta remember, Matt Damon is an Oscar-nominated winning actor. He's been in this business a long, long time. And he, he was in Oppenheimer, which I think he was as good as everyone else in that movie. It's just that he was overshadowed by Killian Murphy and Robert Downey Jr., so people didn't really remember his performance, but he was great in that film. Great in that film. You know, one of my favorite moments from the movie is to, when they're trying to recruit the scientists. And, like, him and uh, Kim and Killian Murphy are going around trying to recruit all the scientists. And, like, the scientist is like, why, why, why should I have to move in the middle of nowhere? Take my family with you. And then he, gives, he says this. Why? Why? Because this is the most important thing to happen in the history of the world like that line sent chills down my spot spine when i saw it in the trailer and the movie like that line like oh wow shows you matt damon isn't just you know this you know guy who's best friends with ben affleck he's a great great actor he is great and you know i don't know what the movie's gonna be about but i'm excited to see what chris nolan has up our sleeves and i think matt damon you know i think you know who knows maybe this is another oscar nom or win for whatever he's got planned up his sleeve. Because you know everyone's going to go check out a Chris Nolan movie. But guys, what do you think? Are you guys excited for the next Christopher Nolan film? And what do you think about Matt Damon being the lead star in his film? Leave a comment down below. Let's move on to our fourth topic here today. Lanterns. Lanterns. A show that I am very, very much excited for. Not just because, you know, we got my boy Kyle Chandler playing Kyle Jordan. But... You got my boy John Stewart in here, which I grew up watching John Stewart as a kid. I always actually thought John Stewart was the big Green Lantern when I was a kid because I watched because I watched the Justice League Unlimited show, which starred my boy my boy John Stewart in there, and I got very excited when James Gunn announced we're getting the Lanterns back, even if it's on the small screen, but one day on the big screen we're getting the Green Lanterns back, which I think. Warner Brothers has afraid to go into Green Lantern again after the debacle of the Ryan Reynolds film. And, you know, I've always wanted to see Green Lantern again, especially, you know, when we saw them in Justice League. That got a pop for me because I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, they got Lanterns in Justice League. Now, we've all been wondering, who is going to be our John Stewart? We've we've been talking about this for a, few, a month now. You know, there were rumors that someone named Kelvin Harrison Jr. was the lead guy. That was quickly debunked. And then we were down to two names. Aaron Pierre and I believe Stephen James. And, you know, I think it was yesterday they were saying, like, oh, Stephen James is going to be the front runner. Well, now that now we have finally found out who our John Stewart is, and it's none other than Rebel Ridge star Aaron Pierre. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Lanterns 
finds it's John Stewart with Aaron P. Air. Now, what what do I think about this casting? I think it's a very, very good casting. I think, you know, he Aaron Pierre killed the Beryl Witch. Personally, not watched the movie yet. I've seen a few clips. I've watched the trailer. I watched that trailer and, I, and I'm like, does, does no one see that that's not Jon Stewart right there? Like, that is literally Jon Stewart. Not just the looks, but the the way, like, in those scenes I saw in the trailer, I'm like, damn, I, I can buy this guy as a Jon Stewart. Now, he's very hot right now, according to everyone, because he killed a Rebel Ridge, and everyone's like, dude, you gotta check this guy out. And people checked it out, man. And people like, this guy, people like, this this guy will make a good Green Lantern. And James Gunn, I think he listens to the fans. He listens to what they have to say. And the fans were like, hey, James, you gotta go check out Aaron Pierre for Jon Stewart. And you're like, okay. And I think, you know, you, he grabbed him when he's hot, you know. I'm very excited for this Lantern show, and it's really cool now that we now have our Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, and Jon Stewart. Now, the question is now, for the series, now that we got both of these actors in here, we got both our Hal and Jon, who is going to round out the rest of the cast? rest of the cast, because there are still some people I think you need to have in this, in this movie. I mean, show. We know it's going to be, I, we know it's going to be a more of a contained story. But the thing is, the thing is, you, there's some more important Lantern characters got to be in there. I think, you know, you have to include Carol Ferris. Carol Ferris is going to be very important to Hal Jordan. And, you know, I wouldn't also mind seeing a love interest for my, my, my boy, John Stewart. He's kind of had a lot of love interest in the comics, you know, if that's through the Justice League cartoon with Hawkgirl, but he's also had relationships with other characters, including, you know, some other female characters in the Star Sapphire Core. You know, John Stewart's never really had, like, a main, like, love interest. And, you know, but I do think Aaron Pierre is going to kill this role. Like, just look at this man. This man is John Stewart already. Take away his, his beard and put him side by side with the cartoon, they match perfectly. He matches exactly what I expect Jon Stewart to look like. And I think he's going to kill it. But what do you guys think? Do you think this is a good casting for Jon Stewart? Are you excited for Lanterns? Are you ready for this series to begin? Because I for sure am ready. Leave your comments down below, and let's move on to our final topic here today. And that is this. We got confirmation last week. I didn't report on it because I felt it was kind of little. That uh, we have a Voltron movie coming. Voltron, yes, Voltron. And, you know, last week you know, we got confirmation that uh, I believe his name was Daniel Quintoye, who, if you don't know that name, you're not, you don't know, nobody knew who this guy was. He was, the only thing people were talking about was like, oh, he was the understudy in Tom Holland's uh, play. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, he must have really done something to get get them involved in that. And we're like, okay, you know, this is being directed by the guy who did Red Notice. Not the biggest great flag for me, you know, the guy who did Red Notice, because Red Notice was not so great, in my opinion. Not so great. But, you know, hey, it's Voltron, you know, Voltron, you know, the the defender of the universe, Voltron. This is definitely a cartoon. Uh, I'm going to say cartoon. Don't hate me in the comics. I know it has anime inspirations, but it's a cartoon. Uh, my fa- my father loves Voltron. Loves, loves Voltron. He, he loves this property. He loves it. And of course, Netflix did their own thing with Voltron a few years ago with their own animated series. Which, you know, my, my, another person in my family, my brother, absolutely loves that series. Me, I thought it was okay. I didn't watch all of it. I watched, like, the first season. But, you know, we're going wondering, you know, who else is going to join this cast? Because, you know... You gotta get a big star in there. Well, according to Hollywood Reporter, they got a big star, ladies and gentlemen. According to them, Henry Cavill, the cavalry himself, is to star in Voltron for Amazon MGM. Now, a lot of people, I think, will say, like, oh, Henry Cavill, not such a hot name right now, you know? He was in, you know, Argyle, which I think Argyle, in my opinion, is the worst movie this year. I think it's the worst movie this year. And then he was in uh, that recent Guy Ritchie movie, which I think was good, but that movie made no money. It made no money. Uh, people were starting wondering, is Henry Cavill still going to be a big name in Hollywood after 
he hasn't really found a lot of success after his role as Clark Kent Superman. And of course, he's got so many things in development. You know, he's got his new Highlander movie coming out from the director of John Wick. Uh, he's working on his Warhammer series as well. We didn't don't, those weren't coming out for a while. Those are not coming out for a while. But now that he's in Voltron, it gets me a little excited because now you've got some star talent in there. you got some notice in there if you want me to be a little hint hint in there. Uh, I think Henry Cavill's perfect for this. You know, the one thing I love about Henry Cavill is that he is not ashamed to share his nerdy side with the world. We all know Henry Cavill literally paints Warhammer figures. Yeah, paints them, which I think to be open about that to the public is so great, you know, because there's a lot of actors in the world today, you know, who they star in these superhero properties, but they never really say like, oh, I love this stuff. You know, I love this stuff. They just say like, oh yeah, it's cool to be part of it. When Henry Cavill is part of a project like Superman, like The Witcher, he's like, I'm going to go, I'm going to nerd out. I'm going to tell them everything that's right and everything that's wrong. That's who Henry Cavill is. And, you know, of course, I haven't really ever t seen him talk about Voltron, but I have to assume he knows about Voltron and that if you got Henry Cavill joining this cast, maybe there's something special with this movie we haven't seen. Uh, I think he's going to be great. I have no idea who's going to play. You know, we they, they aren't saying who he's going to play. You know, there's so many, you know, characters in Voltron. You know, if that's to the pilots, if that's to some of the generals, even that's to the princess. Uh, but guys, what do you think? Do you think this Voltron movie is going in the right direction as now we got Henry Cavill, the Calverine himself, to be in this film? Leave comments down below. And thank you guys for watching this video. Guys, make sure you comment on this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and go check out all our other content on our channel. And please, please, guys, subscribe. It helps so much. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.